After you took a terrible looking fit away and turned your ankle, what should you do right away? Or maybe you were practicing jujitsu in your dojo and your partner landed on your knee in a funny position, or it was nothing dramatic and you just rolled your ankle getting out of bed. Doesn't matter, many of you probably heard the acronym RICE, Rest, Ice, Compression, Elevation, to manage any acute traumatic injury. Unfortunately, it is only half correct. I think it's time to update the old acronym and call the police. Let's go! Hello there, my name is Mike Wong, physiotherapist from My Physio To Go. Our channel is created and inspired by common questions we get asked and conditions we see in our daily practice. Our goal is to educate and provide you the tools to help you manage your injuries and get back to what you love doing, whatever that is. In this video, I will be using an example of my sprained ankle to go through the process of policing my injury and how to manage any acute injury properly. What's police? To break down the letters, P stands for protection as in having a brace or taping to protect the injured structures. So a well-fitting ankle brace if you sprain your ankle or taping your shoulders is important if you have hurt yourself lifting weights. Like a bandage on a skin wound, if you protect and cover it and prevent it from getting, being scratched again, your skin would heal much faster. Same goes for any injury. In this example, we have the brace to prevent me from turning my ankle and stressing the injured ligaments. So O and L stands for optimal loading. Unless you broke some bones or have bleeding that's not well controlled, you need to optimally load the injured area responsibly. What that means is you need to gradually increase the movement and pressure on the injured area. This of course also depends on how bad your injury is and what your pain tolerance is. It doesn't mean that after a badly sprained ankle, I want to be jumping around on it. This is where we take out the R in rice and replace it with O and L. Rest is okay, but some people take it too far and completely baby the body part and it becomes weaker, stiffer, and more painful. Movement is great to increase mobility and it prevents stiffness and ensures the injured area doesn't get deconditioned and weak. Now research has shown that bed rest and immobilization can lead to decrease in muscle mass within 10 days and actually up to 40% of muscle strength loss within the first week. Furthermore, in more studies looking at bone density, it's found that there's 1% decrease in bone density within one week of immobilization. So obviously my sprained ankle, you're not going to be completely bedridden, but you get the idea. So simply get moving. For the rest of I, C, and E, it remains the same. I stands for ice. You can use a variety of different techniques and solutions. From ice packs, gel packs, cryo cuffs, and ice tubs, it doesn't matter too much. Ice is used to help reduce the amount of inflammation and decrease the amount of fluid buildup in the injured tissue and of course it provides some pain relief by numbing the nerves. As a general rule you want to ice an injured area for at least 10 minutes. Now this is, depends on the body part. So you can ice a knee for example for 10 to 15 minutes but probably not your fingers because the surface area is much smaller and it gets colder much quicker. So use common sense because you don't want to get another injury from the cold. So repeat this if you can during the acute phases for at least two or three times a day. A lot of people think that icing for the first two three days is enough. That all depends on what your active levels are. If you had an ankle sprain two weeks old and you're feeling better but decide to go jogging or do some light ankle work in the gym, you may want to ice the ankle after the activity because the activity could have aggravated the injury slightly. Next C stands for compression. You can use compression bandages, compression sleeves, neoprene sleeves that give you the firm support that you need to reduce swelling edema. Research has shown that compression helps to improve lymphatic drainage. Remember, more swelling, overall increased recovery time. If you're not going anywhere, elastic compression bandages are great to give you a little bit more custom compression as you can target specific areas that you want compression. But if you need to move around a bit, then I would recommend compression sleeves that is less likely to slip around and you'll not need to adjust, readjust them as much. The literature on ice along with compression is actually quite powerful as it can reduce blood flow, reduce swelling and improve function better than just ice or compression alone. Last, E stands for elevation. What it means is elevation of the injured area at or above the level of the heart, which allows proper fluid drainage and it prevents accumulation of edema. So there you have it. Police, remember to update this acronym. So please give us a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Let us know in the comments below. As always, let us know what you'd like to see us cover next and we'll see you next time.